On behalf of Universal Pictures, it is our distinct pleasure to welcome you here in Rome to the official press conference of Fast 10. So, without further ado, please fasten your seatbelts and welcome to the stage your moderator, Jacqueline Coley. Hello, everyone. Um, it is my honor to welcome you all to the global press conference for Universal Pictures Fast 10. Again, I'm Jacqueline Coley. So without further ado, allow me to welcome to the stage the cast and filmmakers of the Fast family. If you all can please join us. Here they come. Let's give it up for them. leader, star, and producer of Fast 10, the man himself playing Don Toretto, Mr. Vin Diesel. Here we go. Thank you, sir. All right. Wow, this is not at all. Just looking at y'all, it's really kind of nice. Yeah, I'm way down here. Hi, hello, everyone. Uh, Louis, I'm going to start with you, sir, down there. <laughs> As a director should be, just overseeing everything. Sir, we are here in Italy. First of all, thank you, Universal Pictures. Donna Langley, enjoy the flight. It was fabulous. This is such an incredible global event. Just the idea of coming here for a premiere is spectacular. But you, sir, had the daunting uh, opportunity of building many cities on these various sets, going to various locations, balancing this incredible cast, and doing it while all still having moments of character and heart and, I would just say, family in the midst of these just bonkers action sequences. How do you make that balance as a director? Well, I mean, the, the beauty of the Fast and Furious franchise is from the beginning, it was set on location with real stunts, an amazing cast, international cast. And uh, uh, personally, as a director that saw this, the movie as a fan, the first movie, and then grew up as a fan and learned filmmaking through, frankly, Fast and Furious, uh, becoming the director of this amazing franchise, I had to pay respect to what the, the franchise was, has been forever, and bring it back to the streets, to various cities. Rome, in particular, has been amazing for us, and uh, this cast has loved playing on location, doing their own stunts, and you'll see it all tonight. Yeah, and Brazil. I mean, just give the give the folks a quick preview of some of the locales. So we got Rome. So we got Rome. We've got uh, Brazil. We have uh, Portugal. There's yeah. an amazing scene in Portugal, and of course, we've got Los Angeles and London, the place that has welcomed us for the f for the last few movies. I love that so much. Vin, sir, I have to bring it to you because as I was getting prepared for this press conference, I went back and watched the films and it, it struck me. I mean, this is going to be 25 years, the better part of your adult life that you have been shepherding this character, this franchise, and now we're at the penultimate chapter. You have to be in a moment of reflection of just what you've assembled, what you've been able to create. What do you want the audience to be thinking about as we approach these final chapters? What are you cherishing about these final parts of this part of the saga? The first thing is I want people to enjoy the most incredible, uh, most wonderful assembled cast in history. All the people that are here have brought so much to this franchise and to this mythology. So just the first thing I would say is enjoy an impossible and beautiful and incredible cast. 
Wow, that's a good way to start with it. I will say that's great. And I will say it's great that you have somebody like Louis behind the camera as a fan and bringing in new faces like we see like Daniela and Alan. But for you, sir, is there a particular moment either on set, on camera, off set, on camera that you really are like, I'm going to specifically cherish or one that you love? Because I know the barbecue scenes are very key and very important, but is there one from this one that you want folks to keep an eye out for? It's hard, I know. No spoilers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, you know, when we went to film this movie, from day one and every single day on set, we would remind ourselves that it was a miracle that we were filming the 10th chapter in this incredible franchise. There's so many incredible moments and I, I'm unable to isolate any of the moments because when I see the movie, I'm affected by the whole. Every contribution, every person that worked on the movie, every person that works at the studio, and of course the, the angel director that we have, all of it together is, uh, leaves you with a feeling and an emotion that elevates this above what a normal movie would be. So I, I'm always bad at, at picking out one particular scene because a, a movie, when it's effective, should hit your spirit. You should walk away from the movie feeling different or feeling moved in a way. So I. I hope that when everyone sees the movie that they have that feeling. I think they will too. Folks are in for a treat. Um, tonight, you all are after this rushing off to the premiere. And I will say, as much as this is sort of like the party that Universal put on, they invited us here to Rome to put on this incredible premiere for it. There's so much preparation that goes into just the tiniest moments in this movie. I know it is intense. But Michelle, I do have to say to you, as a woman that produced a literal stunt woman documentary, you have to get excited when you get the call that they're going back for another fast movie because you know you're going to get to play in your favorite sandbox. But it's also like the hardest sandbox to work in, and you know you've got to do that. Talk about the prep that goes into a three-minute fight sequence because I don't think people understand. This is not you just don't saunter up on set <laughs> to learn how to do this. Uh, no, no, you don't. Um, to be fair, you know, I, I really do feel like there should be more love given to the to the stunt world, just in general. Like, I think they need their own category at the Academy. Um, Facts. They put their lives on the line to entertain us. Many have lost their lives in the process. And there just isn't enough love given to these people who, like, really give us a show, you know? Um, that being said, you know, with these fight sequences, my favorite bit is just, you know, court, the, the, the choreography of it. You know, us as actors, we come in and we do this amazing choreography with each other and you have these stunt doubles, you know, on rigs flying out of windows and it's just really cool. And, you know, for me, this is home. It's like anytime I, I'm like getting my, my, my ass kicked somewhere, <laughs> I'm like, home, it's so nice. So, <laughs> I, I don't want to unpack how cool that is that you're like, let me get beat up and I feel like home, but I dig it. I really do dig it. That's a great way to be. Um, I guess it's being around people that you've been doing with this so long. I mean, Jordana, I mean, you've been here since the very first one. This is just seeing you guys here, first of all, the lack of age between y'all is disturbing as well. Like, I'll put it that way. But what's great is even in these final chapters, you guys get to show something new. And they have you in this one paired up with Mr. John Cena here getting to really embrace the action, like the genes flow deep in the Toretto family, like you still can kick butt. What was that like for you to sort of, again, get into play in that for the first time this time? It was really, really fun. I mean, like, like Michelle, I enjoy the choreography. It's like a dance that you learn over days and then you get to show off on, on the day you shoot. And um, I got to do it with the best. I mean, John was coaching me through it as well. And we were like, hey, how can we interject like our characters into this fight scene and, and make it unique and you know, maybe a little bit funny and have a little bit of a wink to the audience? So that was really fun. And can I also just say, like, because we, we film these scenes and, and these films individually, it's kind of, it feels so unbelievably 
insane to be on stage with this giant cast. Like, it's pretty, it's pretty remarkable, I have to say. It's really like an honor to be here with, with it, everyone. It's very, it is, very, very cool. It is literally iconic. Everyone at Universal said it. I'm going to you, John, sir, because he already hinted to it as, as you do as a leader of this, again, this fast family, but you get to live in your own brand of badass in this movie that I think folks really are going to get to have such a great time with. Because I will say this, he does it in his own way, with maybe his own ride, but your character, this one, he gets to do a little James Bond with it. He's on a mission, and we really get to see him living in the, in the Toretto jeans of like, I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna get it done. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like having your sort of James Bond, uh, Jason Bourne on an adventure type moment through this one? Because you really are on a bit of a, not a solo mission, but a singular mission. Uh, I well, I'll, I'll let the, the audience and the, the journalists be the judge of that. I think um, it's incredible that we have all of these people together, as Vin stated. Uh, I come from a universe where our credo is, if it's important, make it important. And I think with all of the collective minds, talents, strengths, and gifts here today, in this very city, with this enormous event about to unfold that everybody's very excited for, which is extra special, uh, I think we can all agree that Fast 10 is an extremely important event in the theatrical universe. I really hope everybody sees the, the journey that I get to go on and enjoys it as much as I enjoyed making it. But this is, um, this is the, the, the beginning of something very big and I'm very grateful to be a part of it. I appreciate you for saying that, sir. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I will say everybody shows very true colors to their characters in this film that we've seen before, but every one of you also gets to show new sides. And I will say, Tyrese, sir, the leadership that your character has been screaming about for the better part of two decades has finally been bestowed off on him in this film. And he's embracing those stripes, shall we say? What was it like for you to sort of have the character's big wish fulfilled? Uh, I, I, well, what you don't know is if we do this again, I'm gonna be announcing that I don't wanna do it anymore. I didn't you know, know Vin makes this leadership thing looks real easy, you know what I mean? But no, I um I just want to say to everybody in the audience and everybody on the stage um rest in peace to my mom. She's always instilled in me never get too familiar with being blessed. Everything about your life when you get to wake up and do what you love to do what a blessing it is. And where would we be without the support that you guys have given us from the beginning? We're just so grateful. And I, you know, this, this, this Roman Pierce journey from too fast, too furious on out, I had no idea that it was gonna be anything beyond five minutes. So to be here in Rome, and be on this stage and looking at the beauty of so much talent, so many people committed to their craft and contributed to this, this world, um, Fast and the Furious. I'm just happy to be a little slice in this big equation, but where will we be without the love that y'all keep giving us? So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, it's it's so interesting, Jason, um, sir, with your character when we talk about the love because w when we were introduced to your character, I think a lot of people watching it obviously cast him as a villain. Sorry, son. Appreciate you, sir. But as we've seen through this transition, we've seen through your character, through Shot, like he's done so much to really, I think, redemption is a part of the character as much as anything else, or maybe you would disagree. I, I, I think folks are gonna be excited to see his journey in this transition from what was cast as a villain to part of the family. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Hello. I, th I think the uh, perception of Shaw is clearly uh, he's a villain from the offset, but from the Shaw family perspective, from my mum's perspective, da lovely Dame Helen oh, Mirren, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a son. nothing wrong. <laughs> We're just people doing the right things for mum. Yeah. So that's not really a, a villainous trait. Uh, you know, we do get in the way at times. Uh, and but I think over the course of, you know, the, the journey that sort of Shaw's had with, with Dom and the, the, the people within the, you know, the close family, 
we do see that uh, Shaw himself is not exactly what he's what he was originally perceived to be. He's certainly just a man of deep-seated principles who likes to really keep things... You know, he can identify right from wrong, and I think if you're on the wrong side of the fence, it's just there's just a lot of mess that's concerned with that side. So <laughs> I think uh, we, uh, you know, deep down, he cares a lot about people close, especially family. Uh, I think one of the reasons he created so much carnage was to do with, you know, our, uh, our brother got hurt. And But I think along the way, we, Dom and, uh, and Deckard Shaw have become, you know, almost like, you know, very uh, aligned with their with their sort of reasonings and what they stand for as, as human beings. And I think they come together to fight a common good. You know, this is just building into a crescendo where, you know, we can actually fight arm in arm to fight this common enemy. So uh, it's, it's nice to see that sort of art for Deckard Shaw and the Shaw family to not be so persecuted. <laughs> oh, we're going to get to the Shaw family, especially uh, to our queenie. I, I want to talk about her, but... Sung, it, it's just surreal. Like, you both are in my eye line, and I just, the internet would lose it with this shot of you two together. The fact that what I know, which they will see, which is that you guys have a moment that if you have cared about either of your characters for any amount of time, you, and you're a fan of the Fast Saga, you've been interested in what would happen when these two characters have a scene together. Sung, what was that like for you coming into that moment? Because you lived it. You lived uh, this entire experience to now have this sort of be the, the bookend of that. What was setting up that scene? And let's be honest, you get to kick ass in it. You get to fight in it. You get to really take it to, to Mr. Shaw. Well, first, it was an honor to be able to um, share the screen with you know, a hero. You know, I'm a fan of what Mr. Statham has accomplished in his career. You know, when you get to work with a master of his craft and to learn, um, I'm not, you know, an action hero. That's not my, I guess, ethos as an actor. But when you get to meet somebody that has mastered his craft over decades, you know, it's a, what a wonderful opportunity that is. And then, also to be able to service the the fan base that is the foundation of you know the Fast and Furious franchise to answer these questions of what does justice mean in this moment for both characters you know and the justice you know on the surface one might assume that oh it's just you know two egos coming to battle but the justice in this was you know Deckard Shaw you know, his ethos is in the right place, you know. And he does merit being part of the, the picnic table, the Toretto table. And I think when you see the action scene, or the scene between, you know, uh, Shaw and Han, you know, I feel like justice is served. And, he, you know, Shaw merits being part of the family. So I think it was just really beautiful. You know, it's a beautiful moment. And... Um, when action Downplaying scene... Downplaying how much you kick his butt, though. No, I just no, want to be no, very no, clear. No, no. <laughs> no, and again, you know, to echo what you know, Michelle said, it's like, you know, we had great, you know, stunt performers and you know, coordinators that make me look good, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, it, it's so great. No, so well said. You know when you get to a picnic scene, everyone who sits at it has gone through a lot to get there. And so when you sort of join the family, there's lots of things that you have to do. And Scott little nobody. Um, he starts off as an agent. He's the man in the, when we first get introduced to him. And by this film, I think folks are going to be interested. He has a little bit of a, a Walter White moment. Like, he's starting to break bad and do it very okay. He's, he's okay with when Dom calls him and he says, I need you to go to Rome. He, he wants to go. He needs to be there to, to be on maybe not the right side of the law this time. Yeah, well, I think it's, uh, it's much easier to play a little bad. And it's a lot more fun. Um, probably also aligns a little bit more with who I am personally. So Good to know. It's been a good ride. Has this been a preview of maybe how, how far are we going to take it in the next one, maybe? <laughs> Dom? <laughs> spoiler, spoiler. Everyone's always putting me on the spot. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Um, Alan, I will say um, your character, uh, again, I can't wait for folks to see it. It's really a very 
intense introduction. You're going to have audiences really having emotions about your character instantly, and I say that as a compliment to your acting, sir. You had like, what, 12 hours from when you got off the plane to then get on set and have to do your first big scene with Brie, which is nuts. No pressure, yeah. But it was fun, and I think, you know, coming in with that kind of energy was actually a real gift, um, you know, because it kind of forces you to stay on your toes and rise to the occasion, and uh, the bar is set so high with this cast, um, you know, it was, it was just, uh, it was, I think it was the right way to get involved with it, yeah. I love that so much. And you're a new person joining this cast, which I think is so great that you bring such a dynamic off. Daniela, with you, ma'am, as well, joining this cast. And I will put you on the spot, because everyone had this moment at one point to sort of join it, but that's got to be a pretty great phone call. I mean, when they called me and just said they wanted me to do this, I danced around my apartment for a full week. I was like, what, you want me to go to Rome and ask these people questions? Yeah. Sure, it'll be awesome. What was that day like for you to know not only were you going to be a part of the Fast family, but you're going to line up on a racetrack against Dom yeah. Toretto and have a scene like that? My God, for me, I, I, I don't know. Coming from such a small country as, like, Portugal, uh, I never had dreams as an actress ever. For me, it would be just like, oh, my God, I, I've been... I don't know, I've been working since uh, I was 17 and I've been doing soap operas and then I did my first movie and then I was like, oh my God, I wish I could just rely on movies in Portugal. And then I did my first movie and then I was like, oh my God, I wish I could work in Europe like a, a French movie with a Portuguese uh, character or something. And then I did that movie, and then I was like, th and then I stopped dreaming. I was like, <laughs> for, me, for me, that was it. And then I started working internationally, and I, was, I never envisioned that. I was like, oh my God, who, who's upstairs doing this? I don't know what's happening. And then I got that phone call uh, about Fast, uh, and I was, I, I still don't know how is this everything happening, and I'm so grateful. But for me, it wasn't that moment uh, um, about the phone call. It was really the moment that I met Vin, and I had the first conversation about the movie after reading the script, and that was when I realized that this isn't just a franchise, this isn't just a movie, it's really a lifetime experience. They live this, they've, they've not been doing this for more than 20 years, they've been living this, and this is their life, and I'm so proud, and I, I, I still can't believe that, I'm, that I joined this boat with this, all these people that I've been looking up from Portugal, and now I'm, I don't know, I'm in their lives, and I, and I, I just hope to, to be able to keep sharing moments with you for many years. Ah, oh, it's incredible. <laughs> it's... It's a testament to the film and the episodic nature of it because where we see you now, as incredible and as fierce as your character is from the first frame we see her, we know based on this franchise as, if it, as it continues, we'll get to see different sides of her. And Natalie, I think your character is a perfect example of that. Again, in later chapters, we find out new things about her. And one thing I will say, like any fast movie, there's faces in this movie that you guys don't know about. And I think there's one that's particularly awesome for you. I just like the idea of her having a past person sort of pop up and we get to learn a little bit more about her in this one, which is kind of fun. Don't tell them who, though. They need to figure it out at tonight. She's so douchey. <laughs> 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 That's the only hint I'm going to give you. Good, good, good. Natalie, take it from there. Um, um, yeah, I guess uh, it's very... Uh, what's been fun about Ramsey is that being a hacker or a hacktivist, like, so much of her probably... Pre her previous life was probably in a basement or a, a warehouse somewhere working independently from through a computer like she could cause maximum destruction on her own from one room <laughs> and now she's like connecting with this family of people and choosing to stay and be a part of it and contributing in this kind of epic way in her own little way like that, that as a collective they are kind of a force you know and um but with each chapter that Ramsey has been a part of, yes, great, she's really good at the technology and, and making um, certain things possible, but she also has to earn her stripes in other ways. <laughs> and whether that's um, you know jumping behind the wheel of a massive truck and she doesn't drive, um, or whether it's like get, getting um, you know, uh, our team connected to someone from her past, 
because I don't know if you know much about hackers, but there's this very, very kind of cool like community of people that you know, live very under the radar and they go by different names and it's kind of really cool. And so in this movie, Ramsey kind of brings the team to somebody who is a part of that kind of community of uh, people that's from her past. And um, yeah, I think you'll be excited about who that is. He's very, very funny. Yeah. He's, I, he's yeah. someone who I, I can't, without giving it away with something about him, I don't know. I don't want to say Brits give me. <laughs> that, that, he's saying no, no. It's a but memorable he's, moment. He's very, very funny in in this, and it was. A, I, I'm not gonna call him douchey, Michelle. <laughs> That's gonna be the quote of the press conference. So I don't really. <laughs> it's he's, gonna be good. It, his his character is definitely a a, um, a, f a very like welcomed like moment yes. of levity and comedy. Because I, I, I'm scared to give anything away, Michelle. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to stop talking. <laughs> we can say this, Miss Bree, ma'am. Um, hi, I love the levity that you bring to this, and I would say this. There's there's just a few Oscar <laughs> winners on this stage, and I love all of everyone's assembled work. But I loved watching you be hilarious in this and look like you and Jason Momoa. I might who's not with us but here in spirit y'all were having so much fun like i really love how hilarious you are in this and so much fun how much fun is that to have that sort of switch because i know it was something you were looking forward to do like the comedy of it Comedy. I want to be here with these people <laughs> for like my whole life. I, it's true. Are you kidding me? My friends and family have never been more invested in anything I've ever done <laughs> than this. I have my phone and probably has 5,000 text messages because I'm not sending them enough content. Uh, so I begged for many years to be part of this. Um, and then when I got the call to be part of it, it was a very quick turnaround. It was very fast and furious, as Alan said. And so I, it was, a, it was crunch right. time, and I am very annoyingly actory in that I like like nine months of prep, and they were like, how about two weeks? And so <laughs> luckily, I uh, got a call from Vin within about moments of getting, <laughs> getting cast, went over to his house, met his incredible family and children, and they sat across from me at a table like with their heads in their hands, and they were like, so what will you be bringing to the Fast franchise? <laughs> and I was like, I gotta figure this out. Um, but luckily, um, his kids helped me out so much. They all gave a piece that ended up becoming Tess. A huge part became his youngest daughter. Uh, specifically, when we were at her um, eldest daughter's uh, birthday party, she was wearing a jacket that said good vibes only on it, but she was like in a kind of a, a sassy mood. She was like stomping around, but had this jacket. And I was like, that's it. And she is so smart, so funny, and so honest and trustworthy. And so I based the character off of her. And uh, <laughs> it's working out great. <laughs> I, I, I would say that. And folks will see that. Miss Dame Helen Mirren, ma'am, it's so great that you're like sitting next to me here. And also, as everybody brings their talents to the stage and to what we see on screen, what I love even more is the passions that Brie talks about that you all get to live and your love of action is the one that I am like so happy for folks to really see because for me, I see you in something like Red and then now recently in something like, you know, 1923 and, and obviously with this, I <laughs> Get that shotgun, get that shotgun in the corset. But for you, like just what Michelle was saying, it's bigger than that. And like it is an art form. And I love hearing from folks, again, with your career that are so passionate about the art form of action. And, and I would love to hear some of the ones that were your favorite action movies that you were sort of saying, like, OK, I got to be a part of these because I loved these from the past. Yes, I mean, I begged to be in Fast and Furious. I was on my knees in front <laughs> of Vin, not for that reason, for a completely <laughs> different reason. <laughs> <laughs> I was begging him that I could be in a Fast and Furious film. <laughs> and gosh, it worked. It was amazing. <laughs> anyway, um, 
No, I, I, I completely, <laughs> I'm completely with Michelle. You know, uh, stunt people, stunt organisers, uh, designers should have Oscars without a doubt, especially in this day and age when so much of these beautiful, amazing films like Fast and Furious depend on the creation of the stunts. As much as the execution of the stunts, of course, stunt people are so courageous. But the actual design of the stunts, uh, um, it's extraordinary work. And, and I, you know, as, as, um, as an actress, I just love to work with these kind of uh, creative people and, and watch their craft. I find it um, just so impressive and moving. But um, I, I'm only going to reiterate here, I guess, you know, uh, people talk about family, family, family with fast, and, and it is family. Of course, look at us. You know, we are a weird, dysfunctional, <laughs> but loving family. And the thing that holds it together, and, and, and this is not pretentious and it's not fake, it is love. It really is. It's love of the craft, love of filmmaking, love of your fellow actors, uh, performers. Um, and it, it is a sort of extraordinary thing that Vin has created. Um, there's nothing like it in the history of film that I'm aware of. So I'm incredibly happy and proud to be a part of it. Thank you. And we're happy to have you. Um, I have to give her a hug. I, I won't, I, we're not doing this. Thank you. Thank you, honestly, because I, I, I will bring questions, I'm, I'm but you bring energy that I will never be able to match. I want to definitely talk about Abuelita, though. Um, Miss Rita Moreno, I told Vin this yesterday, but in the Pantheon... <laughs> yes. In the pantheon of Abuelita casting, we have reached a new pinnacle, having you be now the head of this family. I mean, of all the families to be the head of. And obviously, what you bring and what people like Dame Helen Mirren bring, you can you just bring it when you walk on set. But what was that like for you? Because again, I don't think there's anything at this point you haven't already done. But was this a novel new experience for you to be coming into a film like this in the ninth chapter, like what was the most interesting part for you sort of peeking into this family saga? I was very, oh. I was very nervous. Oh, I can't believe I that. mean, this is a family. Yeah. And you, you know, uh, the way I see family, you can't just worm yourself in because you may be charming or you have some award or something like that. It's very, very different experience. And uh, the, one of the most wonderful things that happened, thank you, Louis, is that he let me do some impromptu words. And that, that killed me because uh, it actually gave me the opportunity to be emotional in a way that I never expected this scene to be uh, for me. But w some of the wonderful things that happened that were so new to me, there is a scene, no, I'm not going to give anything away. <laughs> No, no, no. There's just simply a scene where, uh, after all, he is my son. Uh, we embrace each other. And uh, I remember, and, and, you know, as mother and son. And um, all I could think of, even though it was not part of the scene, was, my God, thousands of women would love to be in my place. <laughs> Facts. At this, millions of women at this point. But I do want to say uh, to Helen, uh, I was on my knees. <laughs> Shut up. Sit down. Sit down. The nonna is speaking. <laughs> I was on my knees because I'm so fucking ambitious. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> that I am period. not done. Now here's the fun part. This is so. This is such fun. 
my daughter and I, we came here in advance of this amazing event so that we could uh, look and be part of Roma. And uh, we were in a restaurant literally two nights ago. And it was a very simple restaurant. It looks like a grocery store where they have long tables where everyone sits next to it, everybody. Not a big deal. And at some point, somebody at the table said, are you Rita Moreno? <laughs> and I said, yes. And they said, West Side Story. And I said, yes. And they called over all of the waiters and waitresses. This is Rita Moreno of West Side Story. And the reaction was, uh-huh. <laughs> Very nice. They had no idea who I am. So I thought I need to do better than this or I will lose face with my daughter. So I said to them, I will tell you why I am here in Roma. And I explained that I am in this film and that uh, I get to do a scene with Dom, who is my Well, they went crazy. <laughs> they went crazy and it, the, the whole damn store just started to scream and yell and carry on. West Side Story, yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> But Fast and Furious, oh, Dio mio, incredibly. It's true, it's true. You can get up on that. Oh, I love you so much. Oh, I love you. You killed it. As the theater kid in me dies a little bit inside, <laughs> they don't know West Side Story. I'm going to applaud that. Um, <laughs> Miss Charlize Theron, ma'am, I, I, I feel bad for making you follow that. I'm not just going to go ahead and say I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. That was incredible. But I will say this. You did some incredible things yourself on this movie. I, I guess I have to go ahead and say it takes a woman that does a movie like Atomic Blonde and things like Furiosa, going back to Aeon Flux, if you go folks for paying attention. This is something that I know you love, but you also had a tight window. You had to be fast and furious with not just one, but two epic action sequences really operating in, in some moments. Well, talk about how your career as an action star led you to be able to, because again, these are very big productions and there's so much going on to stay grounded, stay centered, and again, your character, she's terrifying, and she's never flinching, but we just really love watching her kick butt. How do you, how do you sort of balance that when you have all these competing things and you're kind of on your own in, in a couple of those scenes? It's just so nice to be out of a fucking box. Like, <laughs> it's just like, I, I'm so happy. I'm not just like, yes, yeah, standing and staring and intimidating and <laughs> Um, I just remember Donna Langley saying at the last premiere, she just walked up to me and she just went, that's the last time you're doing that. <laughs> so Next time you're going to be working. <laughs> All right, Donna. And I, and I got scared. I was like, oh. Um, but I, I mean, it's, it's intimidating and also great. I kind of kicked off the movie, Jason and I, um, a lot happened in the beginning of the movie and I, I was on a tight schedule because I was shooting another movie here and so I had hard dates out and it's all physical stuff it's you know just stuff you can't rush um, we had very limited time to kind of work with each other but we were both uh, ready like physically ready we were we were doing all of that stuff separately so when we came together we had a really good foundation but you're still always like I don't know can she fight <laughs> I was like, she looks like she can fight. And I just remember meeting her in the gym and she was already like, she was there before me and she was like fighting and sweating. And I was like, oh, fuck. I'm <laughs> and, then we, and then we just ended up having such a good time. I do. the things you learn. Sometimes I'd be in the middle of a fight with her and then I would be like, oh my God, that's Shirley's throne. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh shit, she's, <laughs> she's punching me. You know, like I forget that I'm in the middle of a fight, you know? 
was pretty damn cool. You rock, babe. Because by the way, fighting with with people who 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 don't like to give it everything, and who who have any lines that they don't cross, it's a problem because then you can't be free in your expression of body. And we have no boundaries. And like you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like she she just she just looks like yeah. the kind of person you can throw against the wall, yes. and and, sh- and and somebody and who will throw harder. you against the yeah. wall, and like yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Taking a turn. <laughs> so like yeah. And I, I like you know we need more Charlize Therones in the world. Oh That's all I'm God. saying. Oh, stop. From the OG, I mean, from the OG. Taking it back to girl fight, girl fight, everyone. Yeah, girl fight, I, I just this is the OG right here. I mean, before any of us, um, you are really, truly one of the toughest bitches I've ever met in my life. Like hands down. And I'm from South Africa. That's where we make tough bitches. Um, I don't. Well, I don't even remember what your question was, How but it was fun. It Whatever was fun. was, it was fun. Yes, I got COVID in the middmiddle of it, and that was even fun. That's how much fun I was having. I appreciate you on that one. I want to bring it back to you, Louis, sir, before we get out of here as well, because we've talked a little about the global scale and everything, but we haven't talked about the stunts. And I want to specifically at least preview a stunt that was on a storyboard, that was on a map, that you then have to turn to folks like Don and Peter at Universal and say, so now we got to make this, guys, so help us do it. And it's like a whole thing. What was that stunt this time, if you can preview it for us? Which one is talking about? Whichever I mean, everything one you want to. Like the, <laughs> most, the most <laughs> intricate, the most every, complicated, the every, one that... Yeah. Every stunt we bring is incredible. I mean, it's, it's never been done before. And what we do is we make it practically. We use visual effects to help us, to enhance, to really make it safe. But it's the stunt players, it's our amazing second unit directors, Spiro, Raz- Spiro Razzatos, who's been with us, Alexander Witt, and it's not my fault. Rome gets a little hurt and, you know, damaged. That's Spiro. I had nothing to do with it. Alexander Witt, who, you know, you know has done, you know, the Gladiator movie, amazing. And then Olivier Schneider, uh, amazing fight coordinator and second unit director who did all the fighting, who, you know, held the lead. So, yeah. Every time we do a, an action scene, uh, it's incredible. The, the, the trick is also that, as you've noticed, the actors are doing their own stunts. <laughs> they are in the middle of it all, you know, risking everything. Yes, it's true. Like, when I arrived, I saw Michelle and Charlize fighting to the death. I, I was terrified. You know, the punches stopped an inch from, you know, like a centimeter from, from each other's faces. And they're incredible, incredible. So, so yeah, every, every stunt we brought to Universal, they're like, are you crazy? We cannot do this. And yes, we did. We did everything. And we did it for real. Um, there was a day that we, uh, when I was working where we actually... <laughs> we had to stop because they were like, no, 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 you can't do that. Like, for real, you can't do that. And like, producers had to come in, and I was like, oh, I was like, guys, I can do this. I can do this. And they're like, no, it's just you can't. And I was like, I can do like just once. Like, let me just do it. But it was like that kind of practical stuff that if we weren't allowed to like do it, you know. And I think a lot of movies don't invest to have people like actually try and do it. So that's what I think makes this movie great. And I do appreciate that the minders had to tell you no. We are running out of time, so I do have to go ahead and cut us short. But Mr. Vincer, I just want to give you this last thing. Folks got a lot of choices sometimes on where they can go for action and adventure. Give me a quick little tagline, sir, as to why folks need to spend their summer with the Fast family. What makes this saga, what makes this story different, and what makes this an action movie that really separates itself from the others, from the pretenders? 20 people up here who could answer that question better than me. Um, who, wants to, who wants to take that? You Go ahead, okay, you take it. I, I just want to ask you guys. Name me one boat, and by boat, by movie or franchise, name me one boat with a captain like Vin Diesel. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> you, sir? are what makes this unique in every way, shape, or form, this press conference. Yeah, go ahead. I would have to say that, you know, if anything, what we're doing is we're inviting you to take a walk with us into the sunset. You know? We're inviting you to take a walk with us into the sunset. Again. 
And and this is, you know, 23 years and counting. And it's just, you know, it's a it's a graceful goodbye. Well said. Do it in the cinema. Do it at home. Don't do it in the cinema. Go to the theater. Thank go you so much. Go to the much. theater. It'll be spectacular. And on that note, we will go ahead and call it a day. But if we could go ahead and thank the folks at Universal Pictures, Donna Langley, Michael Moses, Peter Kramer. There's so many folks to thank. I want to thank all of you for listening. I want to thank this incredible cast for being here. And that is it. Everyone, let's go see Fast 10.